Good evening. This is the Mount Anthony Union School Board meeting for Wednesday. I have to keep reminding myself it's a Wednesday, May 15th, and we're a few minutes late. We are live a few minutes after 7. The first item on our agenda is a presentation from our middle school behavioral specialists, and I'll have uh, Mr. Payne introduce them. Sure. Um, I've asked uh, our two behavioral specialists to come before the board today. They are uh, Katie Burnell and Amber McEachran. They have been with us as a team for this school year. Uh, this was a, uh, an area where we were looking to do things a little bit differently for the school year, especially after conversations as a newly appointed principal in the fall and feedback from uh, the faculty, the community, and this board to take a look at it and see if this was uh, an effective use of resources. And so it is my pleasure to introduce these uh, two young ladies uh, to the board this evening, and they're going to talk a little bit about what they've been working on this year. Great, welcome. Um, well, Amber, you probably don't know us, so we're going to no. introduce ourselves. Okay, that's great. You're a new hire for this, the it's end of this. Out. This is our school, this is your first school year. That's yes. Here. So, uh, Richard, who's writing, is our recording secretary, and then Ed, would you like to start? <coughs> Just introduce yourself. Oh, Ed Letourneau. From Bennington. Uh, David Durfee from Chatsbury. Nathaniel Durfee. I'm the student representative. Dave Fredrickson, Bennington. Sean Marie Oler. Hi, I'm Donna Leap, assistant superintendent. And Leon Johnson, North Bennington. Nathan Wallace, North Bennington. Frank Kenny, Chatsbury. Tim Mulbrook, Connell. Peter France, I live in Woodford. Nelson Burnell, Connell. Kristen Thomas, and the student at the high school. So McGuire, principal at the high school. Nice to meet you. So thank you, both Katie and Amber. Okay. So we're gonna have we're gonna be looking at the screen. Mm -hmm. Yes, please. <laughs> okay. So this evening, um, Katie and I are gonna be talking about our role as the behavior specialist at the middle school. Um, I primarily work in the Tyconic House with Associate Principal Tony Lee. As part of my job, I'm responsible for working with all of the sixth grade students, the seventh grade students from the Vista House, and the eighth grade students from Prospect. And I work with the Loomzak House with Associate Principal Mary Ellen Breen, and I work with seventh and eighth graders on Cascade, Somerset, and Waterwheel. Okay, so a little bit about what we do. Um, in the beginning of the year, we started to revamp the behavior forms, and we added, it was passed out to all of you to look at as we go over it. Um, and we worked with several staff members to um, get a new form that includes more information that will help us understand why the behaviors are occurring and where the behaviors are occurring. Um, so if you look on the form, there's the first area is location. Typically this is seen in the classroom. Uh, the antecedent, and this is what's happening right when the behavior is occurring. Uh, the problem behavior is um, a checklist. And then the motivation, what is a student trying to gain from their behavior? Are they trying to get something or are they trying to avoid something? And then the prior to referral is important to us and it covers did the teacher um, warn the student? Did they give them a timeout in the classroom? Um, what, what happened before they were sent out? And lastly is the teacher consequences. Since we as behavior specialists do not give consequences, that part is important to make sure that these students are receiving a consequence for the behaviors. In January of this year, we started using the school-wide information system, um, also known as SWIS. And what SWIS does, it is allows us to enter data into a system. It collects the data, summarizes it, makes pretty graphs that we're going to show you in a minute. Um, and it allows us to look at individual students, school-wide data. And some of the graphs that we're pulling from tonight are from the quick five. We're going to be sharing with you the referrals, the averages referrals per day per month, our problem behaviors, and also time of day. So the first graph is number of referrals. Um, we, this year from January 1st until March, May 14th, we have seen a total of 709 referrals. And this may seem like a lot, it's a high number, but it's important to um, state that 75% of the student population 
has received zero referrals this year. 8.6% of the population has received between two and five referrals, and then 4.7% of the student population has received nine or more referrals. And then the Swiss Data Program also breaks it down into grade level, so we can see the difference in between the grades. Sixth grade accounts for approximately 47% of the behavioral referrals, seventh grade about 25%, and then the eighth graders about 52%. Now it's important to also note that when we're talking about referrals, we're talking about referrals to either one of us. Um, we're not talking administrative referrals, we're talking to the behavior specialist, which can be for a number of reasons that we're going to discuss in a minute after we talk a, about time of day, which is our next graph. Now we do see some spikes in, the, in time of day. Um, and you're probably wondering, well, why are there those spikes? Well, be from 7.30 to about 8 o'clock, you're going to see a number of spikes because that's our advisory time here at the middle school. We use advisory time to do daily check-ins with students. We also encourage students who have requests to come see us if they're having an issue with another student, um, they want to talk to us. We encourage them to use this time to do that. The next spike is about 9.45, um, and that is a sixth grade unified time, and we also encourage students to come to us during non-academic classes. So there's a spike there. Um, the next spike we see is about 11.30. That's a huge transition time here at the middle school. Sixth grade is going back into the classroom. Seventh grade is at lunch. Eighth grade is getting ready to go to lunch. So that's a huge transition time here. And then 1 o'clock, uh, we have a lot of our 8th graders have unifieds or guided studies during that time. So again, encouraging students to come out of non-academic core classes. And this slide shows um, the different types of behaviors that we typically see. As you can see, student request is the highest, and that accounts for about 32% of the referrals. And as Katie was saying, this can, students can ask to come see us for a number of different reasons. They have a problem with a peer, you know, something may have happened at home and they want to discuss it, or they just have something on their mind that they would like to run by somebody. Um, the next highest behavior is, incorporates three different behaviors, and that is defiance, disrespectful, and non-compliant. And that is about 30% of the behaviors that we see. Um, the next one is check-ins. This is 17% of the behaviors. And this could be, um, Katie and I could call a student down whether we heard through a teacher that the student's just having a rough day and the teacher feels like they need a break or they might need to talk to somebody. Um, they are sent down to either Katie or I. So what do we do with all this information? Well, first of all, we're running small social skills groups with a number of students. Um, right now, we have uh, social skills focusing on transition, friends, friendships, conflict resolution, goal setting, and that we're doing that with sixth, seventh, and eighth graders. We also run formal and informal lunch groups uh, weekly, and those can be students requesting to eat lunch with us or a scheduled lunch meeting. Um, we're also having individual check-ins with students. Some students we check in with multiple times a day, some we check in daily, some weekly, depending on the student's need. And then that leads us to student observations. So what we do is we go into a classroom with students struggling, we go into a classroom, we kind of see what's going on, and we use that information to lead us into a functional behavioral assessment, which Amber is going to talk about. Okay, a functional behavior assessment we typically use with the more problematic behaviors. The behaviors that we're really not sure why they're occurring. Um, they may occur across a variety of different settings, um, different teachers, so on and so forth. So with an FBA, we typically look at the antecedent, like I said before, what is occurring when the behavior is happening or what occurred right before <laughs> the behavior. The next is the behavior itself. What is the behavior? What does it look like? Is the student getting out of their seat? Are they not participating in class? Are they yelling out? Or are they being defiant towards the teacher? And the last part of that is the consequence. Like I said before, what are they either gaining or avoiding from engaging in this behavior? 
And then with that information, we typically do several observations across different settings and times. Um, we collect the information from the observations, and then we also go to team meetings to get input from the student's teachers, which is very valuable when trying to understand the student, considering they're the ones that spend the most time with the student. And after the FBA is completed, we work with the team of teachers to develop a behavior plan. We currently have multiple behavior plans for students sixth through eighth grade, and some of these plans focus on things such as anger management. How can we get the student to look at situations and be able to cope with things that are usually make them have outbursts or aggression towards other peers, etc. cetera. Uh, work completion, how can we get students to complete more assignments, complete their homework. Participation in class, uh, being on time to class, coming to class prepared with the essential things, binder, paper, pencil, etc. cetera. Um, demonstrate, demonstrating respectful behaviors both towards their peers and to staff members, and then also remaining in the class. <clears throat> so as you can see, we've been doing a lot of work this year, but we're also looking forward to the future. And um, right now we have a team of five people that will be attending the BEST conference in Killington the week after school um, releases. And we'll be focusing on social skills program development, implementation, how can we get it in the classroom, how can we be pro more proactive with our social skills. As we know, many of the students who struggle kind of have some social skills deficit somewhere along the way. And we just need to help them overcome those so they are more successful with their education. Um, we also are looking to increase the number of social skills groups we are offering next year um, based on the work that we are going to do at the BEST conference. And another thing that we're really trying to do next year is to become more proactive, um, going from a proactive and less of a reactive. So helping those students, decreasing those problem behaviors instead of dealing with the behaviors after they're occurring. So we, we hope to do this by working collaboratively with staff, attending team meetings, doing more observations in the classroom, and giving teachers um, tools and resources to help with classroom management if needed. And then also we hope to continue the use of the Swiss data as it has been extremely helpful in tracking students' behavior and figuring out why these behaviors are occurring. And we'd like to open up the, um, if anybody has any questions for us, we'd be more than willing to. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, uh, in terms of, of the staff, do you keep any records as to uh, how many students are referred to you by individual staff members? We do. Yes. That system also, um, right on the top, the teacher has to fill out their name and their class. And so that information is input into the computer as well. And we could bring up a PowerPoint that looks at the graph that breaks it down to each individual teacher. So there is some, <clears throat> some connection between the number of referrals that a teacher makes and the work that you're doing. I would assume that if you find a teacher had a lot of referrals, you would be more proactive Correct. with that person. Yes. I've got one more, one more uh -huh. question. The, uh, <clears throat> What's your feeling in terms of the responsibility of the homeroom teacher or the student, uh, whatever teacher is basically responsible for, the, for those two students in dealing with these problems as opposed to having you deal with them? Um, what I think your question is, what, what is our feeling on the advisory teacher um, dealing with the issues that students have rather than ourselves? Um, I think that as a community, as a school community, we are all involved in helping students um, deal with and um, kind of move on from whatever their struggle is. I think that it's a team approach and that's why you see us get involved with the advisory teachers and with their core teachers, unified teachers, to help them. And it's more of a collaboration and not an individual person's um, responsibility. And also, since the students are meeting with their advisors just in the morning, if a situation arises throughout the day, that teacher may not be available. They may be teaching a class where they cannot stop and, and listen to that student. So that's where we can come in and 
be of assistance um, to that student with that problem. Right. To but make sure to communicate to the teacher that this is going on. Right. Tim, did really you mean the, the room that the students mm -hmm. actually came out yes. of? Yeah. Mm -hmm. He meant that where the, in your place, not necessarily the advisory, but where the, <coughs> where the student is coming from. I mean, I think that would be really useful information for Tim for, you know, as a tool to see where, where the, where and with whom the, the, the infractions are happening. But I, I, I think that we do look at that data, but we also look at the team approach and how can we work together with that, with that teacher. Mm -hmm. Grant and then Leah. Um, Tim, did you want to answer something first? I just, it might be helpful for the board, too, to understand uh, Katie and Amber's uh, certifications or licensure. Right. So if the ladies could offer that briefly. Sure. Um, mm -hmm. I have my master's in education, and I hold a Vermont state license um, in education and special education grades K or 5 through 12. Sorry. And I also have a master's in education as well as a um, certificate of advanced study in school psychology. Great. Fran? Okay. Uh, as far as documentation or, or keeping files, how is that done or what's the process or do you have one yet? We do. Uh, these forms, like I said, are given to the teacher mm -hmm. um, who sends the student out and then all of this information is inputted right into the Swiss data. Typically, we like to do that by the end of the day. Sometimes it has to wait till the next day because things come up. Um, but we try to input it and update it as soon as possible so that it's current. The only reason I ask that, let's say a year from now, for the sake of argument, mm -hmm. and same student, maybe it's a different student, you can go and that's, there's a file somewhere, or it's on a disk or whatever it is, and you can, that, you can punch that up and, and see what the behavior, how it's changed or any of that stuff. Yes, okay. Swiss Data does maintain those records. Okay, all right, good. Uh, Leon and then Nelson. Well, Fran asked, asked one of the questions that I had, the last one. You didn't ask if this form is electronic. No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to tell them it's a great process, and I really like how you put the data together. And that's, I mean, it's, it's really great. And these are the things that I've just been talking about all the time in terms of how you uh, graphically display the things and break them down and so forth along that line. So everybody need to take a look at at this as this is how we get to the root of things. Nelson and then Ed. Yeah, basically what it sounds like is you've, you've created a data warehouse where you go and you do searches to see what it is. So are you watching certain patterns for certain times of the year so you can see if something is occurring that's creating a larger volume? Right, and I think by next year that will definitely will definitely be able to do that because since we did just get this in January, we, don't, we have nothing to really compare it to right now. So I think that definitely will be helpful come September into the next year to compare to see, okay, in March, there's, it's a higher level of referrals. You know, it's right before break. Kids are acting out a little bit more. So we could see those patterns once we have next year's data. Yeah. And where you're seeing these patterns like that, what I'm assuming is going to happen, you can correct me if I'm wrong, is that you're going to try to be ahead of the yes. the curve so you can slow that down. Right. Well, I think that's the proactive approach. Exactly. Mm -hmm. They were talking about. So I'll ask Leon's question, which is, have you thought about making this an electronic form? It is available <laughs> it is. electronically um, for our staff. A lot of um, staff prefer to email it to us rather than handwrite it. Yes. And you can enter the information right into the form? Mm -hmm. Yes. Great. Yep. Ed? At the very beginning of the of your presentation it was like drinking from a fire hose but you one of you made a, a comment where you threw out the figure of 72 percent was that 72 percent of the students who haven't had a referral correct okay. haven't had a behavioral referral okay. to one of either Katie or I thank mm -hmm. you Dave. Um, <clears throat> thank you first of all this is very enlightening and I think I have the same question. <laughs> what struck me most was, and I was inferring this, I guess that 25%, but maybe it's 28% of the students have had since January one, it at least was, one referral. I know, I probably ran through those quickly, but um, I can say them again. 
75% of the population have had zero behavioral referrals. 8.6% um, have had between two and five referrals. And then 4.7% have had nine or more referrals. So, okay, so 25% it sounds like mm -hmm. uh, have had at least one. Correct. Okay, right. mm -hmm. that, so that struck me, that was, as I say, that was the thing that struck me most was that it was that many that one in four have had a problem. And it maybe goes to, I don't know what you were thinking, Tim, when you asked your question, but whether yes. some of it could be handled in the classroom and... Uh, it doesn't have to be a negative thing that they're coming right. to us for. So uh, thank they you because could that be was struggling. My, they yeah, could that be was struggling. They could be struggling something at home. They could okay. be struggling with a peer. Mm -hmm. They could. It, it could be a multitude of reasons why they choose to come to us or why the teacher chooses to send them out. It doesn't have to be a negative thing. So if student request, which is one of the options here, correct, might yes. mm -hmm. count yes. for mm -hmm. some of those. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Or large, maybe perhaps a large portion. As the graph showed, it was one of the uh, the top reasons why students come the to see us. Reason. Yeah, the top reason. Mm -hmm. So I have a, a series of questions. Okay. So the this referral is for the two behavioral specialists. Yes. Correct. And Tim, what other kinds of referrals? In other words, do we still have an in-school suspension or a afternoon detention or whatever other? Yes. So you still, so I need to be really clear that as Amber and Katie have said, they are not disciplined in the building. Right there. And that was important to communicate that to faculty and kids at the beginning in order to build the relationship with kids to be able to seek them out and feel comfortable coming to them, but also to faculty that sending a student out to Katie or Amber, the student's goal is to come back into the classroom as quickly as possible so that you avoid that conversation. Oh, here they are back in the room. There's no consequence. Uh, discipline and consequences are still still dealt at either the individual classroom teachers can give after school detentions or a consequence within the classroom or it can be dealt with as an administrative level with Tony Lee or Mary Ellen or myself and that can be office detention in school suspension uh, we have lunch detention there's a whole variety of things that could be given as far as uh, what, what behaviors we have to address so this is a piece of how the middle school as a community is dealing with some of the things that were mentioned up there in terms of a student struggling at home for whatever reason or not managing in the classroom. And then there's a whole other section which deals more directly with discipline yes. and not necessarily behavioral issues. Yeah. So I think just for the board, for especially the newcomers to be aware is that this is, these two positions have uh, been in question over the last couple of years of how they are used and what they actually do so Tim is following up with what these professionals are doing within the school as a part of the uh, referral system so I just want I don't want to say that I just don't want you to misconstrue this information as other information if that makes sense and then I have a, um, a geographic <coughs> which is where do these children come to? Where are you housed? Do you our, have a nice greenhouse? Do you have a lounge? Do you have an office? Do you have a, you know, wh where do so, they come to? <laughs> so Amber's office is directly in the Taconic House office. It's right in with um, Tony Lee and two guidance counselors. And my office is in the same office as Mary Ellen Breen, the Malumzak House. And it's also um, where another guidance counselor is. So you are housed by the admin near the administrative teams. Yes. Correct. Okay. And Peter. Is, okay. Go ahead. Sorry. And this is different from last year's model where they had a big classroom. Specialists had a classroom <laughs> to themselves, separated from. So we felt I felt it was important to, and the, lady, the two ladies were agreeable to it. Split them up and pair them up with an administrator. And it's been working very effectively. But it sounds like that spiral staircase that Tim and I wanted to put in between the upstairs and the downstairs <laughs> would be really helpful for you guys to collaborate. But you seem to collaborate quite well, yes. even in different parts of the building. Peter, then Fran. Um, yeah, I'm assuming that, that this information gathering system or comparable ones are used throughout other schools. Swiss um, data is used in, all, in most of the BSD schools in Pownall. Okay, but uh, what I'm getting at is, is 
Um, is there a comparable program or something that's used in other schools, statewide, region-wide, where what I'm getting at is, is how does the information that you're gleaning from this in terms of behaviors compare to, you know, is it the same level in comparable schools elsewhere, or is something unique to Bennington is what I'm getting at there. Isn't this a PBIS? It, it, it is. It's, it started... Um, this is the first year that it's been open to schools who are non-PBIS schools, um, and it is a Vermont thing to have Swiss data. There are a lot of other schools in the state that have Swiss data. Um, nationwide. And nationwide as well, but specifically for the state, there are many other schools that have Swiss data, and most of those are PBIS schools. And I believe in terms of comparing it to other school districts, I, I believe, I'd have to double check again, but um, the Swiss data, I think you can submit the information and they do a report based on, you know, our referrals based uh, compared to other school districts within the state. Like I said, I'll have to double check on that again. But. Fran? I'm just curious, you, let's say for the sake of argument, a kid gets sent to one of you and he's there for whatever time, five, ten minutes, whatever it is sent back to the classroom and then does the same thing again does he get sent back to you or is that the principal that's, what happens that's kind of uh depends on the situation right. i think sometimes uh, they'll come back to us we'll process again okay. and say you know, obviously we weren't ready to go back into the classroom okay. depending on the intensity of the behavior right. or right. what that behavior was um, mm -hmm. they might be sent to the administration which makes it nice that we are in the same right. office so I can okay. walk over to Tony's office and say you know I have this student he's been sent out twice within the past 15 minutes what do you think I should do and okay. so that that's nice that we're able to collaborate like that right. I'm just curious if, if yeah. it's back and forth three four five six times one when is the cutoff here? So, but anyway, okay, that, that's fine. Thank you so much for coming, and I Thank will you. ask one last technical question: Is that is this a, um, a a system that we pay a yearly fee to, or yes. so yes. it's yes, okay. Thank you. And if anyone would like the PowerPoint um, for the sake of not wasting trees, it, you can just email one of us. Um, if you are emailing me, I do ask that you email klburnell at svsu dot org. We'll get who. We'll get somebody else. Yes, you will get someone else. <laughs> you. You'll get <laughs> you will get another caver now. Um, so please email me if you would like a copy, and it will just send that right off. Great. Thank you both Thank you so, so much for Thank coming. You Thank you so much. Thank you. And we look forward to next year's data. <laughs> Can I just make a little comment? Sure. Uh, I would just especially like to thank you for coming, and just to say that that is really uh, an example of what the model of a behavior specialist should really be in a school. <coughs> and I want to thank Tim and, and uh, both of you for the wonderful job you've done in implementing that because it's really um, not a job that is supposed to be putting out behavioral problems all the time, but to be proactive and using the data to problem solve is really the key to making it a, a useful system to help stop interruptions in the classroom. And that's really, um, we're trying to promote instruction here, and your job really makes it much better. So thank you for that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And you did mention the PBIS. As I, would you just tell this board what that is? It's usually used in the, the um, elementary grades, yes. and it's promoted by the state. So. And not all the, the elementary schools in the SU use it, right? Um, most of them. Most, most? Do, yeah. Okay. Thank you. Did you, did you say no, what it stood for? It's no, Positive I, Behavioral <laughs> <laughs> Intervention Supports. <laughs> so the next on our agenda is uh, public comment. Are there, is there any public comment this evening? Dave. Uh, Two of our former teacher coaches were inducted into the Vermont Principals Association Hall of Fame, Al Plant and Berger Vigsness. Awesome. Did you go to the... Yes, I did. Thank you for representing us and yourself. <laughs> That's great. Fran? Okay. Uh, just to keep everybody 
I'm just going to say this at every single meeting until people get sick of me hearing it, but I'm still going to say it. Uh, at the end of the year, we're going to be opening up teacher negotiations. So I would like everybody to keep that in mind and board members and administration talk it up because uh, the only way we can really get anything settled is we have open negotiations so there's no questions, if, ands, or buts about what was said or who's going to do what and what the uh, items are put on the table. So hopefully the uh, superintendent and the board chair will start talking it up also. We got quite a bit of time and let's do the right thing and that, that'll uh, take care of any rumors out there. We'll do it in open session. Thank you, Fran. So I'm just going to review the agenda. We have a finance section, which uh, there's a treasurer's report. Gail is actually here if you have any questions. The budget status report. Uh, Rick is not here to answer questions, but we can relay them. Financial updates. Tim will uh, give us whatever updates he has, as well as on the concession stand resolution. And Gail is here to answer questions on the bond anticipation note and make sure we sign in the right place. Then we have the consent agenda, the administrator's reports, and um, if you move down to after the student representatives, you'll see some of the committees. And they, they're they listed so that we don't forget any of them. But they may be like the finance and some of the other things may be taken care of. We have no policies. Um, Donna may have a report and I'm hoping that by the time we get to the chair's report we'll have the end of year events from the principals and then we do need an executive session this evening for what it says which is the um, negotiations update on ESP and uh, just to update the board on personnel matters that may be happening uh, SBSU wide that um, MAU may not be aware of. So that's the agenda for this evening. So moving on to finance, but did you have a public comment? I did, I missed it. <laughs> okay, so come on up just, here, Lori. I just have a quick question. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Um, I just wanted to ask a question, and I think, Donna Lee, this may go to your attention. Um, Catherine McClure made a statement in the paper on Saturday that involved um, incorporation of uh, students coming into the middle school from the PLUS program, and, I, and it, it involved incorporating those individuals into a program here at the middle school. Can you sort of elaborate on what that looks like and well, that, how that's this, going to be accomplished? Okay, I'm going to time out here. So oh. that is an SVSU issue. Okay. Tim Payne, who's the principal, is now <laughs> stepped out. Course. And you were at the SVSU meeting where some of us were at that basically described that at the budget time when we went over the budget, that the SVSU plans to incorporate, plans to right. incorporate some of the middle school age children into the middle school building right. and it, all the details are not worked out. So if you'd like to add... I just didn't know if there was any further progress on that. But that's no. sort of like if there was something that was actually no. outlined? No, just no, not at this point. Okay, thanks. Sure. Finance, Treasurer's Report. It's, uh, can I have a motion to accept the Treasurer's Report? And as I said, if you have a question on where we're at with money, Gail is here. So, so move. Second. Uh, any questions? All in favor of accepting the Treasurer's Report? I think it's unanimous. It's unanimous. Uh, the Budget Status Report, um, you can direct questions to Rick, I don't have it in front of me, and my computer's behind me. Chumari. Tim, yes. Can, can I make a comment yeah. about the budget status report? Yes, uh, actually, I can. Since you're looking at it, can you tell me how much we have left? <laughs> <laughs> uh, what percentage of the budget is left? I was meaning to look at that. At the very bottom, on the right-hand side. Yeah, bear with me because I didn't print all of it, and I need to find. Okay, end of report. How 20, much percent? 20.59. 20. 20. Okay, and we have two months. We have um, May to June, only six, seven weeks left. So it's ha it looks like we're in good shape. Yeah, we, we should be. So, Dave, your question? Uh, my question is a general one, and I, Rick will be familiar with it because I asked the same question uh, with respect to the Shaftesbury <coughs> reports. At some point, and I think it was in March, the time frame 
and by that I mean if anyone's looking at this, the very top of the report has a time frame from a date and then to a date. The time frame which shifted from the previous month, last month, to the month we're currently in. In other words, right now the report we have so says May 1st May to May 31st, yeah, right. instead of April 1st to April 30th, which is, and I've only been on the board for 15 months, but the way that it had been at least for the first 13 of those months. And the, the impact of that is if you look at the current column, the numbers you see there are only representative of a fraction of a month. And if this report was run on May 10th, it's for 10 days. We're not able to see at a glance everything that happened. Are you the, talking about the current column I'm in talking relation about the, to the... I'm talking about the current column, right. So my understanding from being on the board a little while is the current column it reflects the warrants that, you're, that, are, that we're currently in this... because we only do warrants once a month. So the, the current column should be and you could take the bottom current column number and look at our warrants and see if they match up. But that was my understanding prior to maybe the shift in date is the the current column is what we're currently approving. Gail, do you know do you know that? I, okay. I that may that sounds like an interesting uh, interpretation. I'm not sure that that's necessarily true. Okay. But uh, it used to be. Okay. So <laughs> All right. Uh, in any case, when I asked about this uh, regarding Shaftesbury, the answer was, well, the, we do what the board wants us to do. And as far as I knew, in the case of Shaftesbury, nobody on the board had suggested a change in March. And I don't remember it happening in this case of this board either. Um, uh, I, Tim, I would refer to Tim, but I think you're correct. We did not specifically no. ask for any so, changes. So I haven't gotten a clear explanation or, or a definitive answer. All right, so answer. we'll make a note of that. No. Tim, will you take care of that? I'm not exactly <laughs> sure what you're looking for. Right. So I'm looking for, I guess, two things. An explanation of why it changed. Okay. And, and I believe it did change. I may be wrong, but I, I think I'm correct. But also, it, I think it would just be helpful for all of us if we're looking at this to see, here's what the expenses were for last month and be able to, to every month sit down and say, okay, I can look and see how much we spent on this account and on this account. And you don't have that insight at all if the report is run for 10 days or three days if the report is run on the third of the month for a meeting that takes Sean place. I think Sean Marie was right. I think that yeah. what, you know, what we had always uh, done in the past, it doesn't necessarily mean it has to be done that way in the future, is that the, the status report reflected the sp expenditures per warrant. And as, as we said before, the warrant is once a month, usually in the middle of the month, somewhere between the 15th and the 20th. But you would rather see it at the end of the month. The figures in the status report would reflect the, ex the expenditures and the income, I suppose, for, for that month. Uh, to, to me, having you know, looked at financial reports and for various organizations, various sectors, that's the way it's always done. Okay. Uh, but but I can understand the way you're suggesting. I just don't think that looking at it, I mean, here we're looking at a 10-day period, and I think that not all the warrants necessarily were done during those 10 days, but maybe maybe I'm wrong. They, no, they, they, should, they are they actually are done. done. Okay. So in they other words, done. they all have to be in, as the principals know, by a certain date. Mm -hmm. right. The vendors have to have them by a certain date or they're pushed to the next month. Right. Occasionally, I'm called to go in and sign a warrant if somebody missed a date and there's like a you know they need it out like at the SU currently they're going to be they're going to be running uh, warrants twice a month every two weeks to um, keep up to date for the next till the end of the to the end of the fiscal year which would be June 30th and if you take a look on this um, you'll notice there's a very high encumbered amount and you know that is the anticipation of things to come so you'll see that the, the budget balance, that 20% is 20% um, is after the encumbrance. Yeah, okay. So I think we're, so, so, and right. I think they've frozen purchase orders. Um, do you know this? Yeah, I, I know that that's been the, st the procedure in the past, that, that this time we tried so, to. So, okay, that, that helps, and maybe this is something we can just clarify at a 
yeah. finance meeting. I mean, let, 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 me, let me look into okay. it. The finance committee can take a look into it. I think I understand what, what, you, what your concerns are and what you would like to see in that report. I guess what would be, uh, you know, just to clarify that. So if we're sitting in May, would you like it to be dated that it's through April so you know that it's the end of the month? Or if you would just like an explanation on what this means, that would, that would help you. Or do you want it for the last 30 days up to your meeting? No, no not, the, not that, what you said, John Ray. The, month, the full month of April, the full month of whatever. Yeah, and it's not necessarily that's what I want. I just, <laughs> what I really wanted was an explanation of why it changed because what we were getting seemed to be Well, useful. that Tim can definitely yeah. look into and we'll have a finance meeting before the next yeah. uh, meeting on June 19th. So we can bring up the end of the, the years, whatever needs to happen for the end of the school year. Great. Ed? A quick question. Is there a table somewhere with the the code of accounts here so that I can... We haven't had one in a while, but but we can we can get a code of accounts. Sometimes it gets it gets complicated because when we run short of cash in one particular account, we'll transfer it over into another account that isn't fully spent. So, um, but we'll get some explanations for you on it. I'm just trying to understand yeah, what some understand of the expenses are. Yeah, Rick Musey said that now. Kimbrough. Well, we haven't had it in a couple of years, actually. Yeah. So it would be, you know, maybe for the beginning of the fiscal year when they know their account numbers. And they do line up in the, when you look at the expenditure report, you can actually see where those, you can, there's patterns to the numbers for all you engineer types. <laughs> Next, Tim. Oh, uh, I just wanted to report to you, Peter reminded me that, um, there was a concern expressed about money owed the organization that is sponsoring the concession stand here at the middle school. And when we looked into it, uh, what basically happened was there was a confusion or there was a misunderstanding between um, the state and the business office. The business office was trying to do the job as, as they interpreted it and the state was, um, uh, and the people with the concession stand had been told something else. So anyway, the bottom line is that we did work it out. They have received their checks. We did go in and sign a warrant, uh, sign a warrant. An uh, off uh, warrant. Uh, an <laughs> off warrant so that they got the check right away. And uh, the issue was settled. It was a, you know, it's one of those things that actually, as Jean-Marie said, if we had sat down and <clears throat> discussed it, um, we probably could have resolved it a lot quicker than we did. So that so they've been paid and they were paid uh, maybe a week after we met last. That's right. Thank so um, it was taken care of rather quickly. And then Tim, are there any other financial updates that uh, you know? Do you believe no, we need a? No. Sometime though, I think that it would be helpful, and I I don't know if the board is interested in this with the with the changes that are taking place both uh, nationwide and particularly in the state in terms of health insurance and how that is going to affect. Um, the, the negotiation <coughs> process, certainly, but also uh, the way that we may want, want to look at it and what our options will be. Presently, we are, these teachers and, and all the employees are insured through an organization which is a third party administrator administered by Blue Cross Blue Shield, VHI, they call it. And it looks as though VHI is going to be going away and that will no longer be an organization that will handle the insurance. So it's going to be uh, an interesting uh, process to develop an insurance for our employees. And would you just say for edification, the difference uh, and the different boards may have to respond sooner than later because of the size? Yeah. With the, the way that the state now is, is, is organized, and I've forgotten exactly, I think it's 50 people that have to be in uh, a part of a, the new organization. Uh, the Green Mountain Health Board is coming through, and but the bottom line is that by 2017, which will be incorporated into the next series of negotiations, contracts, everybody will have to be in, involved in it. So it's something that we have to, I think it's important for us to understand what's happening because I'm sure that you will be receiving questions on it. Thank you, Tim. 
Uh, Gail, nice to see you. Nice to see you. <laughs> this is a um, renewal of the Grand Anticipation note, the wood chip. Um, it's for a year. Um, it's we pay it off as we as we get the state money to come in. So it's it's being renewed. We haven't paid anything down on it this year. Um, I think Rick said he anticipated that we might be able to pay some of it off this current fiscal year. So it's for $282,753.14, and it's for 1.8%, um, and it'll come due next May. So if we can have you, a motion and... Yes, I'll make a motion to accept the, uh, what do we call it? What's the Wave title? the reading. I waive wait. the reading, but also, what's it called? So it's a grant anticipation note. Grant anticipation note. Second it. Uh, discussion questions. This is the the high school one that we are only borrowing against, right? This is the wood chip system at the high school. Yeah. Uh, it, it for a person uh, explanation is that the state has guaranteed us, or at the time that we put it in, that they would 90%. reimburse us ninety percent of the cost of the wood chip. Unfortunately, they have not come through with the money yet, it's, it's and therefore we have to we have to borrow money in order to make payments to those people that installed it. The unfortunate part is that the interest is not going to be uh, received by us. In other words, we are still going. That'll be an expense for us. The interest Correct. is that isn't that right? And you're going to see that on the warrant this this month that there was interest um, that we had to pay. Right. I don't have right. Seventy-eight something, seventy something Six thousand. Six thousand, maybe. I mean, it's not. Six thousand one hundred eighty-nine dollars. That's due, and we're paying it. It was on this warrant. Right. We hope that the state will come through with the funds that they they uh, they owe us. I think the middle school ones almost all paid off. I don't know. <laughs> so anyway, Dave. This is a. I remember this. Did we do this last year too? Yes. yes. So this is a, an annual request. <laughs> the renewal and, and, and we are we being paid at some point by the state? Then? We have received some monies, Whenever. but we haven't. I, the last time I checked, and uh, you know, we we're always told the money is going to be there. So, but it never seems to arrive. How how do we end up paying this off in twelve months? Well, when the money comes in, and, and um, I believe maybe a year ago we received, or I can't remember the date. Maybe ninety-nine thousand. So we were able to pay some of the note okay. down. Okay. So, so this is the balance, the two hundred eighty. Yes. It was. It was a million something. Mm -hmm. So I mean, just to put it in perspective, it wasn't. I mean, we have been paid something. So it's. Well, but we've also paid a substantial amount of money for interest on the money we've had to borrow to make payments. But think of all we saved. I know. I know. But <laughs> I mean, you think that the state, if they made a commitment, that they would. They would budget finance. for it? You they would think. <laughs> you would think. They would stand behind their commitment. So there's a motion and a second on the floor for Gail for us to. Uh, you know about that. Yeah, so we're about waving that. the reading so that somebody files. doesn't have to read the page and a half, and uh, we're approving the note. So all in favor? It's unanimous. Um, how many signatures do you need? Um, there are three, and there's little sticky notes for everybody. Okay. <laughs> Good. Just start with Nelson there. Yeah, I'll start with Well, I would stand <laughs> over our shoulders. There's been times where we signed in the wrong place. <laughs> I'm not very smart about right. the right oh. place. Where the three are. Pass it on. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Gail. Um, the next <laughs> item on the agenda is the consent agenda. Is there a motion to accept the consent agenda? We have no additions or subtractions. Yes. Oh, so moved. Second. Any discussion on the consent agenda? <laughs> Ed? I'm not here, so I won't ask any questions. <coughs> well, we have the box. If you have a question have the on box. the warrant, the backup material is right here. They're minor, so I'll skip it. It was partly for my own education. But I have a question on the, the, on the field trip authorizations. The sure. signatures are all blacked out on every one of them. Would you like to because talk about that? There, it, we are not allowed online, to show. Right. We're not allowed to show people's signatures uh, electronically. Where did that come from? I don't know. It started a couple months back. As a, I don't know. So I people can't cut and paste on right. something else, which they could do. You take all your money. I could tell. I could actually ask if there was some formal notation that came down, or somebody just learned it and right. decided. And, and I have paper copies if you want. Yeah. To see. 
that are signed. No, I believe they were actually <laughs> okay. signed. I'm just wondering but why. We, they any signature now. It's usually the federal now. government that tries to do that. <laughs> well, them too. We have to watch out. when so, they're hiding yeah. something. So, if you'd like to ask Donna <laughs> afterwards redacting. about the okay. questions, you can come up and look through the spot and look through okay. the backup material. Thank you. Um, any other questions on the consent agenda? All in favor? It's unanimous. Thank you. Moving on to the administrator's reports. Tim or Sue? I've, uh, coming around are the very busy activities that are going to happen between now and the end of the year. Um, I've listed all the dates of all the things. We'd love any of you to come to any of these activities. I did not list the overnight senior trip, which is next oh, Thursday on. to Friday, although you're welcome <laughs> to come. And is that a great escape? That. Um, <laughs> but the rest of the things, we have concerts coming up, the proms and the ward nights and graduation. Anyone that's interested in, in being at the graduation and being on stage, it is June 14th, and we meet in my office at 5.30, and the graduation begins at 6 p.m. We do need to know ahead of time uh, how many of you will be there so we can make sure it's set for the stage. So I don't know how we usually do that. Um, well, if people know now, they can just tell you now. Otherwise, to please email Sue. I will be there. <coughs> Leon will be there. Tim will be there. Those are the usuals. <laughs> and whether you want anyone to who's Anyone who'd like to go, um, Leon really likes to hand out the diplomas, but you can usually push him out of the way <laughs> to hand out a few. I have a few special graduates coming through this year, so I'll ask him to step aside, but. That's because you gotta push him, you're right. <laughs> and whether you're gonna want a cap or gown. Yeah. <laughs> you can come dressed as however you want. Is there anyone else that, or just get in touch with me if there is. And if, if yeah. it's raining, don't go. It's, it's in the stop. It's not going to rain. <laughs> it's raining. Thank you, Sue. Tim. Uh, a similar calendar for folks' uh, information. Um, what is this? Is it mine's probably a little more inclusive than Sue's, and I, uh, I'll just say that this is uh, the yearly practice. So I'm glad it's down to one page because mm -hmm. uh, this goes out every week to mm. faculty, along with a weekly update. So there is a second side to it. Um, but a couple of things for folks to know, we are in the midst of the middle school of uh, doing a lot of testing. This week is kneecap testing for science. These are eighth graders who would be testing. And then next week would be the third and final installment of MAP testing for the school. So it's a, uh, it's a busy time of the year at the school. <coughs> also, um, on the second, on the back page, just a note to the chair that uh, Wednesday, June 19th, you had said is the next anticipated board meeting. It is also the night of eighth grade graduation. Uh, no. Uh, it's a. Uh, no. It's, How'd that happen? Well, uh, we the moved last the meetings to Wednesday. That's how that happened, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, the, and I, I guess it's tradition as well because the last day of school is the 20th. Do your snow days and eighth grade celebration is always the evening before the last day of school. So there it falls on the 19th. So for your consideration, and uh, you'd be welcome to hold a meeting here. It will be a hopping place. Yes, you know what? We can do one of two things. We cannot have a meeting, but we need a meeting for Griffin, though. Griffin's last meeting. Or. <laughs> <laughs> Or well, I don't think won't he be gone already? He, of course he'll be gone. He'll be graduating. Think he's going to come back. He's for not a going. Meeting? He is not going to Texas the next day. Um, we better we, ask him. <laughs> I think he's so, right there. <laughs> I will not be in Texas until August. So okay. Plenty of time. So <laughs> what we've been doing since we moved to a Wednesday is, if it falls in vacation week or if it um, if there's a conflict, we fall back to the Monday. So. Somebody look on those calendars and tell me what's if there's something on June 17th on that calendar. Is there something on the high school calendar for no, June 17th? No, because graduation's over. 17th is, I'm just going to be a bowl of jello. And school finishes, school finishes on the 20th? Last day of school is the 20th, yes. And it's a half day? It's a half day. Yeah. Last uh, Monday, the 17th, is the last full day of school. That's the only thing I have listed. Okay, so um, a consensus. 
is Monday the 17th at work for people? It's the third Monday. I know it doesn't work for me. It doesn't work for you? No. It's, it's the, it's the um, select board meeting, right? Yeah, third Monday of the month, so there's three here. So there's three of yeah. you that can't do that. All right. We could hold that after that meeting. Excuse me? We could meet after that uh, meeting. What time is graduation? Uh, eighth grade it's celebration. a celebration. Celebration. Uh, celebration. <laughs> we don't graduate them, we're just yeah. moving them over to the high school. Uh, I think it's uh, 630. 630. And then there's a big old party. Yes. And Shamri, you had requested uh, dates for middle school, summer school, just just for to wait for the public more. Absolutely. For the so summer school for the middle school will start Monday, July eighth, and the last day of summer school is August second. <coughs> and ours goes from July eighth to July twenty sixth. And they're both four weeks. Three ours weeks. is three, and I don't know how. Ours is four. Okay. All right. Well, I guess we'll. Well, stay tuned for June. We typically don't meet in July, and we um, typically don't meet in August. So, a short meeting on the graduation night. A short meeting? Because we all want to be here. A short meeting on the graduation night. 5.30. That would be probably. Uh, Do you film the celebration? I wouldn't have it the night of the celebration. No, I think that, be, I mean, Tim be can't be there. Oh, it's going to be. Yeah, it's too much. It's a, All right, well. Can we do it before the CDC? Um, CDC? It's 6.30. They have uh, a meeting 6.30, so. Uh, well, why don't we see what business needs to take place? And um, I typically, we used to, when we used to meet in on the second and fourth, Monday, we typically didn't meet at the end of June because, you know, it was after school. And, all right, we'll, we'll not waste any more time on this. We'll, we won't have any business to do. Sue? Can I ask one more thing? Typically, we bring up if we have to hire people and they've been okayed throughout the summer and they've been okayed by Catherine, we typically have something set up that we can still hire them. Right, you we have a saying? tentative hire. Um, we do that. And then we officially hire them in August. All right, well, I'll put my thing, I'll talk to Donna and we'll come up yeah. with it. Gail, um, do you have something we need to do? Well, we usually do the tax anticipation note in, in June. Typically, the last time, last week, we had Okay, so who meets on the second Wednesday? Is it Shaftesbury? Shafts, yeah. And you meet when? Six o'clock. Is there another board? Does, does BSD meet? Or that's does a, North that's Senior Awards Night at the high school. Oh, June. Yeah. <laughs> How about June 10th? Monday, June 10th. That would be the second Monday. Yes? I won't be here. How about Thursday the 20th? How about meeting in another place on the 19th? Oh, Dave would like that. Mm. I usually like to come to the celebration. Those are the. All right, we'll 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 figure it out. And we may just have to do a short business meeting, and whoever can come, right. will come, and we'll need a quorum to do the warrants and the notes and the motions for what? the short summer. Short business meeting at central office. Sure. 5.30? On what day? The 19th. No. No. <laughs> <laughs> Some of them. No. Okay. <laughs> so we're going to move on to Griffin and uh, who's, who's up this month? Thank you. <laughs> Passing the torch. Aha. Uh -huh. <laughs> You're on. Uh, oh, right. Do we have any, does anybody have any questions of Tim? Payne? I'll do Tim. The goal? I didn't know where that was in the item we can do. Oh, we're going to do that under education. Okay. Go ahead. Sorry. Right. <laughs> well, it's like Ms. McGuire thinks she passed out. There's a lot going on at the high school. Uh, some stuff that she didn't put on here. 
The AP exams are just finishing up. I think tomorrow might be the last day. It's nice that they're finally over. Uh, <laughs> sports are going to be wrapping up in a couple weeks. We've got about three more weeks for most of the sports. Uh, I think track ends in about three weeks. Uh, the student senate's holding a blood drive next Monday at the high school. We always need people to donate blood there. Uh, the proms are coming up. Junior prom is this Saturday. Uh, senior ball is the 8th of June. A model UN is going to be the 28th and the 31st of May. That's always fun, and anybody can come on the 31st. We got to see all the people debating their bills. Always fun to do that. Chorus concerts tomorrow. The band concert is next week, the 30th. And kneecaps are next week, mm. the 21st and 22nd. Are these the science kneecaps? Science yeah. kneecaps, yeah. And is this, are they just for 11th graders? Or are they? Yeah. The 9th, 10th, and 12th get to come in late that day. 9th, 10th, and 12th? Yeah. <laughs> uh, I mentioned also at the last meeting about um, a food drive that the student senate put on. It was March Madness. Um, each seminar was uh, allowed to fill out a bracket and to buy in 10 um, cans of food. And I didn't want to release how much we'd raised because it was been another competition for each seminar to guess how much food we'd raised. Um, they didn't give us enough credit, but they didn't give themselves enough credit. Um, we raised almost 600 cans of food uh, in a matter of a couple of weeks. We raised 578 cans, which I think is an astonishing amount of food. Uh, and it was donated to the Parish Center um, for their... Um, uh, Open door yeah. food. Um, and so it was very well received, and they were very grateful for the food. So we will feel a lot of hungry people for a while. Awesome. We're very excited for that. Uh, and tell me, do you mind if I um, discuss something about the bullying and harassment council? Not at all. Uh, this was just something that, uh, that I thought was good news with um, the district. But uh, at our last meeting, we discussed um, the need for um, districts to have, um, in each school, uh, to have a designated employee um, who is specially trained to handle bullying investigations um, and to, so to investigate and to report bullying, um, to be a figure in the school who students and parents can seek out um, if something's going on. Uh, and it was brought up that a lot of schools, A, don't have someone trained. It's um, a few-day training process with the uh, Vermont Human Rights Commission. Uh, so don't have someone trained uh, or don't have it posted um, so people aren't aware of who the designated employee or employees are. Um, and I was very excited that uh, at the high school and at the middle school that we do have someone trained um, and that it is posted in um, the student handbook. So we are uh, meeting those criteria. And I think um, Armando, um, and also the VPA sent out emails um, in the past few weeks about this, um, and asking uh, the schools to comply by uh, the beginning of school next year. So I was excited that we were already out of the game. So that was good news. Great. And thank you for being on that. Um, are you? Is there another MAU student on that as well? Yes, well, uh, Lexi Featherham is. And she's a junior? Yeah, uh, she's a so sophomore this year. So she'll, uh, she'll continue on? Yes. Great. Uh, Question? Dave? On the kneecap, if I uh, come in and I'm not too motivated and do poorly, where does that show up? Does that, do my folks know that? Is that on my yeah, permanent it record? It comes, uh, a form comes from the state. It won't come till August. It comes late. And then uh, a copy of it goes home to the parents explaining the scores. A copy goes in their cumulative folder. And uh, so, yes, that's how they find out about it. So that makes you somewhat accountable then. Yeah. yeah. Is that a motivation? Because I'm told sometimes to people just... For some them. students. <clears throat> I think it's a motivation for some students. I think the bagels in the morning are a motivation for another group mm -hmm. of students. And I think, I think it really depends, don't yeah. you? I think by and large it is taken seriously. Students realize uh, and it's... I think the board has discussed this before, um, but it mm. does not go on a student's transcript. It does not go to colleges in that sense because a lot of colleges, if you're applying to a school um, versus a student that comes from Florida doesn't have a kneecap test, there's don't have an apples to apples comparison. Mm -hmm. um, but a lot of students don't, uh, at least the students I've found, don't necessarily want to go in and try their worst. They do want to try their best at least, and they don't go in and uh, purposely bomb it. There are those students that do that but that's something that they, that's something that's rare, I, I found. Excellent. 
And I think it's good that we only have juniors there during the testing time because the whole school is testing. It's quiet. It's there's no disruption. It's I think that is a smart thing to do. It's not the most pleasant experience, but I have to say, okay, school doesn't <laughs> get as pleasant as possible. You get food, you get breaks, you get snacks. So it is good. And you also get um, juniors get a day off next week. Um, I think it's Friday. Yeah. Um, and that's part of the criteria. They have a, a, a rubric, which is working hard on it, taking it seriously, that type of, not how well you do on it, but that you took it seriously. And we actually keep track of each of the kids, and that's how they earn that day. And that's not from the science. That's from the English, the math, and the science throughout the year. Good question, though, Dave. Mm -hmm. They will be taking the um, these statewide tests in the in the well in the spring, and mm -hmm. when the new when the new system comes mm -hmm. in, the others are in the fall. And I'm not sure is everybody being tested. Uh, just the juniors. Right now, going forward, is it? Yeah, I think Common Course just the juniors. Thank you, Griffin. Any questions of Griffin? Thank you, Griffin. So we have a few. Uh, Nathan, you want to update us on the Ag Committee? Well, you see on the uh, minutes or you know May first meeting that our meeting actually happened in the garden. <laughs> That's exciting. Very few of those. And you'll notice also that uh, Jim Colkeen, the superintendent from CDC, was there and is going to be an active participant in this group. Um, <coughs> there have been several grants, uh, mostly uh, written up by Helen Fields and Stephen Green, that the um, program has received. Um, so you can see, read these events online. <coughs> and, the bottom says next meeting is June 5, but there's a conflict there, so that's been moved down a week to June 12, along with a lot of other meetings. <laughs> <laughs> so is it, are we having, making progress on something, a rel some kind of plan for the uh, CDC Tech Center and something up here, or we're still in the beginning stages? Right. Yeah, Mr. Colcan is very interested in getting some kind of collaboration going. Yeah. Great. Sure, yeah. Maria, I can speak to that too. Tim? One of the positions that we are currently interviewing for is a sustainability teacher. Mm -hmm. This will be uh, a unified course that students will take in the 7th and 8th grade, eight, three days a week. Um, this is in anticipation of the retirement of Tom Scopoets from Applied Tech. And so we've been working as uh, in cooperation with the Ag Committee, but also with uh, um, science teachers and sixth grade teachers in the building to look for someone who would, would be able to make use of the space, which is the consumer science room, kitchen, the garden, and the applied tech workshop. And so we are looking at themes of sustainability and we've uh, had the opportunity to talk to a number of candidates and we're in the process of bringing folks back to actually teach lessons for us. And so I anticipate moving forward with that and working with uh, Donna and Catherine as far as finding a candidate. Okay, great. So I think that's an opportunity for kids to be exposed and then connecting to a CDC program in the future. So when we, I'll talk to you more about, uh, yep. about that position when we, we talked about that at budget time? Did we talk? I, uh, it's been supported as far as the budget. There's unified teachers, and we did not eliminate the applied tech position, so we're repositioning it. Okay, so that maybe should go to an. Well, we'll we'll get an update on that. Ed right, com Ed committee or or the full board at this point. I mean, you're just you're re. Are you teaching a different course? Uh, we're hoping to have a. We're hoping to use the spaces in a little different way. Okay. All right. So we now we're down to the MAU Ed Committee, and not that this is an Ed Committee issue, but uh, Griffin and Tim Payne, um, you got the 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 revised goal that went around, and if people, if people, if this board. Uh, is amenable to this change, we can put it on for discussion, warning, and adoption at the next meeting. It would replace 
bring all the SVSU sixth graders to the MAU middle school to to provide a middle school schedule that provides all students access to the full range of appropriate courses. Uh, I think we should add it on, yes. No, 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 we're replacing, Leon, we're not yes. adding. No, I mean, <laughs> you said add it to the meeting. Oh, yes, yes, okay, we'll add it to the next agenda. I That's thought you I were, mean. we were gonna add a fifth goal. No, I wanted this <laughs> off there, you remember that? <laughs> the other one off. So. So if it's okay, we'll we'll put it on there, and if there's discussion, then we can either discuss it or vote it to replace the fourth one. All right. Okay. Uh, finance, Tim, you already took care of that. Uh, personnel committee of the SVSU meets this Thursday at 5:30 to review the two para job descriptions as well as the assistant superintendent for special ed. And I think there's one other there's one other item on that agenda that I don't have in front of me. Tomorrow. What? Is that tomorrow? Tomorrow. And the minutes from the last meeting are also posted with that in reviewing what that committee reviewed um, and where, what the plan is. And then SVSU, Fran or Leon? Um, I'm going to take it, Leon, if you want. I don't have my agenda with me. I know we had the uh, presentation of the Common Core. Mm -hmm. I mean, Katie Schoenbeck. I, I, Sandy Foster. Thank you. And there's one more, I think. So, I thought there was four of you. So, anyway, so that was a lengthy presentation. It was to <laughs> half an hour. That wasn't bad. And mostly business. But. <laughs> okay, Fran. <laughs> yeah, you got to me or Donna can take it. <laughs> no, keep going, keep going, you're doing fine. No, I don't have, I can't remember anymore. <laughs> okay, so we discussed, you probably all read it in the paper, we discussed the um, altering the SVSU budget for BSD. We yeah. agreed to some mm -hmm. of the reductions that they requested. Uh, BSD does vote, if you're a Bennington um, town resident, they do vote on the 21st next Tuesday the annual or excuse me the meeting the informational meeting the night before or you can call Tim Corcoran and get an absentee ballot um, for that if the boat if uh, well I don't want to say that <laughs> what's the if if the vote doesn't pass the but the school board has to either um, Get an approved budget before June 30th, or they operate at 87 or is it 70? 87 percent of the current year's budget for next year. So they will um, clearly have some work to do if if it doesn't pass. So if you have questions out there, please call a BSD member or take a look at. I'm sure it's online to take a look at what's in their budget and where it was reduced from the last time. Anything else on SVSU, Leon? Oh, I'm looking to see whether we didn't. We agreed <clears throat> to post the uh, special ed uh, assistant superintendent for special ed, which it is posted on the SVSU website. Anything else? We have no policies. No, no policies here for the night, no. Donna? We're moving on then? Yes, we're moving okay, on. we're moving on. Um, I would just mention that uh, I want to thank uh, Sue McGuire and Tim Payne for their work on our uh, school effectiveness plans. They've been working hard with their teams in their individual schools and also as members of our district team. Uh, we've been working with our coach, Maura Hart, to come up with goals for our uh, improvement in all areas of our student achievement and our community relations and communication of results. So our uh, department uh, representative, Debbie LaSure, will be here again next week to meet with the teams and go over our plans. And I think they've really done excellent work in coordinating the plans, also in helping to facilitate some common goals that we can work on together as a district and as all the schools that are in needs of improvement. And we will be presenting some of the results of that to the SVSU on the 29th. We will? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you, Donna. Um, 
I think all of you got an, a, an invitation to the SVSU retirement dinner. There's a number of people retiring from all the many districts within the SVSU. All are welcome to come. Please email Mary Lee if you will be in attendance. Um, there, it's a nice evening. I think it is actually it's here in this middle school cafeteria. Um, the end of we're, we're, we still don't know that if we're going to have a meeting, which is one of my notes to myself. Uh, one of the other things that did happen at the SVSU is that the board agreed to adopt uh, a contract for a special ed um, software to make reporting um, more streamlined and more efficient. And then the copier, uh, there was also a bid award for the copiers throughout the districts. So those are the uh, two other things that between the three of us, we <laughs> we we got the full report out. Um, SPSU. Leon's got one other well, thing. I was gonna, we rescinded the uh, executive committee policy, 7210. So. Right, we. When that took place and uh, we had making sure that everybody realized that we, SVSU employees and so forth had a, uh, had a uh, reduction in force notice motion is what we did. Right, because we're waiting for the title to see if we get title money. Right. So um, we will um, stay tuned about a June meeting and we do need an executive session for uh, updates and we will not be taking any action, Richard, so we don't need to hang around to take notes. And is there anybody that has an other or would like something on the next agenda? Make a motion to adjourn to nope. executive session. Thank you Back for <laughs> negotiations and personnel. Thank you, Richard. <laughs> Can we go into the conference room, Tim? Discussion about